Hello everyone. The main content of this lesson is the basic characteristics of the tea garden waxhopper and its main species. Next, let's learn about the basic characteristics of the tea garden waxhopper and its main species. The generality and prevention and control methods of fulgaroids prevention and control technology. We will learn from those aspects. First of all, let's learn about the fulgaroids. Fulgaroids eat plant juice and secrete honeydew, 1 cm to 5 cm long, have little impact on economy. Some of fulgaroids' species' body is covered with powder material or wax silk. Fulgaroids lay eggs on the host plants, surrounded by protective secretions. They distribute in the tropical and subtropical regions, can be discovered in the habitat of growing plants. The fulgaroid is a major kind of pest that harms plants, which is distributed in all tea areas throughout the country, and the damage is more serious in some tea areas. Most of them belong to the family Hemiptera, Flatidae spinola, family Ricanidae. So what are the basic characteristics of tea garden wax hoppers? We can identify it in the following three ways. 1. Feature recognition. Flatidae and Ricanid plant hopper are medium-sized moth species. With large middle chest dorsal plate, wide forewing, the veins are thin and radial. There are many cross vein in the leading edge area, mostly unbranched, and forewings folded in the shape of a roof ridge when still. The nymph head protrudes forward. It's the abdomen is enlarged, and white wax is often secreted on the back of the body, and white wax is often secreted on the back of the body. Usually, there are many long white wax filaments with or without branching. 2. Harmful Identification Fulgaroids all use nymphs and adults to suck the juice of the tender shoots of tea trees, resulting in poor growth of the damaged trees, thin, sprouting, and slender leaves, even wither new shoots. In the nymph stage, there are white, waxy flocks that pollute the tender shoots, causing cold disease, and adults lay eggs in the tender shoots. Some eggs are scattered, some arranged in rows, and some are dense and ring-shaped. The appearance of the spawning place is rough, which can cause the death of the new shoots. 3. Biological Characteristics The tea garden fulgaroid has few generations. In South China, it have one generation a year and one generation a year in other areas. They all lay eggs on the tea trees or other tender shoots of the plants to overwinter. The newly hatched nymphs are more active and crawl to the shady parts of the middle and lower parts of tea trees after hatching. The first and second instar larvae are fond of gathering at the growing branches in the middle and lower parts of tea trees trees to harm trees. After the third instar, they damage shoots in the middle and upper parts of tea bushes. The nymphs of all ages are relatively fixed to feed. The back of the body is covered with white wax flock. After being frightened, the nymphs bounce and escape, leaving flocks. The flying ability of adults is weak. With weak phototaxis, they generally do not fly long distances, but they are good at jumping. The occurrence of fulgaroids has a great relationship with the environment of tea gardens. Generally, the surrounding vegetation is rich, tea trees grow luxuriantly, and tea gardens with high crowns are where insect outbreaks occur more often. The flat tea gardens, tea gardens with frequent picking, are where the outbreaks occur less. Fulgaroids have many natural enemies, mainly birds, spiders, mantis, ladybugs, etc. In the mountain areas, birds play an important role in controlling the adults of fulgaroids, then stink flies, assassin bugs, and ladybugs prey on their nymphs. The main species of fulgaroids in tea areas in China are Seisha distantissima, Salernus maginellus gur, Mango cicada, Cocoa broad winged waxhopper, Ricania spectulum walker, and Ricania marginalis walker. Then let's focus on learning. Seisha distantissima, Salernus marginalis gur, Mango cicada, and Cocoa broad winged waxhopper. First, let's look at Seisha distantissima. Seisha distantissima. Sema hemiptera flatidae, also known as green moth wax cicada with yellow winged feathers, orange ash worm wax cicada, distribute in most tea producing areas in China. The morphological characteristics of Seisha distantissima. The adult length 
length is 6 to 8 millimeters. The middle chest dorsal plate is well developed. There are four reddish brown longitudinal lines. The forewings are pink green. The apical corners are blunt. The hip angle is a right angle. The wing veins are reddish brown. And the eggs are milky white and nearly conical, about 1.3 millimeters. The nymph is light green. Its back and sides are covered with white waxy flocks. There is a bunch of white waxy long hairs at the end of the abdomen. The occurrence regularity of Seisha distantissima. The annual occurrence algebra varies from region to region. In most areas, one generation a year. Eggs overwinter in withered branches, hatching in the first and middle of May of the following year. Nymphs mature from July to August and eclosion into adults. In September, fertilized female adults lay eggs on the surface of withered twigs and silent. Guangxi and other places have two generations per year. The insect overwinter as egg, some overwinter as adult. Then let's take a look at the green moth wax cicada, also known as the brown moth wax cicada. The adult's body is 5 to 6 millimeters long. The front wing is yellowish green. The leading edge and outer edge are dark brown. There is a dark patch at three places away from the hip angle. When at rest, the left and right wings are close together and erect. The egg is light green, short banana shape, about 1.3 millimeters. Nymph is green, four reddish brown longitudinal lines on the chest back, two bunches of white wax paper long hair on the abdomen end. The surroundings and the back of the abdomen are covered with white waxy flock. Nymphs and adults harm by absorbing the juice of tender stems and leaves. Adults appear in spring and summer, live in low altitude mountain or flat trees. Nymphs or adults occasionally harm several kinds of agricultural plants. Then let's take a look at the white moth wax cicada, Homoptera flatidae, distributed in India and Guangdong and Guangxi, Hujian, Yunnan, Taiwan, and other provinces and regions in China. Damage citrus, lychee, longan, mango, pepper tea, and other dozens of fruit trees and trees. White moth wax cicada adult body length is 19 to 21.3 millimeters, with a color of green or yellow white, covered with white wax powder. The head is pointed and the antennae are bristle like. Compound eyes, round black brown. Wing veins densely reticulate. Hind wings, white or yellowish translucent. White wax cicada nymph length 8 millimeters. White slightly flattened. Its body is covered with flocculent wax. The end of the wing bud is cut flat. There are bundles of thick wax filaments at the end of the abdomen. Symptom of infection. Its adults and nymphs suck the sap of branches and tender shoots, causing it to grow poorly. The leaves shrink and bend. When serious, branches wither and fruits fall. Affects the yield and quality. The excretion can cause coal fouling disease. Finally, we take a look at the family Cicadalidae, Homoptera cicadisae, distributed in Hunan, Zhejiang, Hainan, and Guangdong. The symptoms are as follows. Nymphs transfer to the lower branches after hatching, move to the upper or lower tender shoots when feeding, have gregarious habits from first to the second instar, then disperse to climb to the upper tender shoots after the third instar. The nymphs have five instars. Each instar nymphs are fixed to feed on one place, move to the leaf layer before each molting, then move back back to the tender stem after molting. Secrete white flock to cover the worm. The body is covered with waxy filaments, like a peacock flaunting its tail. There are often many white wax filaments left in the habitat. Cocoa wide-winged wax cicada adults. Body color is brown to dark brown. Back is darker, draped with yellow-brown wax powder. These are all the contents of this lesson. We will continue next class. Thank you for your listening.